Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a new video with me, Fuzzball40. As always, if you're new around here, subscribe down below and make sure your notifications are turned on so you never miss an upload. We are now fully in the build-up to FIFA 22 and I've been bringing out loads of videos teaching you guys what to look out for, how to make coins early game without spending FIFA points on a game. I promise you, if you watch the channel, join the Discord and if you come over to Twitch, I stream every day at 5.30pm. Make sure you go over to Twitch, that's every weekday anyway. Um, I'll be doing this all live. I'll be able to answer your questions, help you guys out, um, and I promise you, you will not have to spend FIFA points on the game this year to compete. But I've brought out loads of videos, different videos, about what to do when the game starts, how to make coins, what to look out for. In the last video, we talked about um, how to build a squad. The video before that, we talked about how to make your first 500k, and I talked about trading with players. Now, this video is going to go over the sort of players you want to be looking at, showing you some players from last year, and how you can find players this year that are going to help you guys to know which ones to trade with, which ones will be in demand, and how you go about buying and selling them. So we're going to head over to Footwiz and Footmind, but Footwiz first, to show you some of the trends from last year, and then we're going to look at Footmind to show you how to find them for this year. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we are here on Footwiz, and when it comes to trading with players early game on FIFA, your big buzzword is always going to be pace. Pace is crucial. Everyone looks at pace, and this year there's a lot of pace in the game, so it should make trading relatively easy in terms of finding players. It shouldn't be difficult to, but I want to take you through sort of four or five players here and what they did last year, um, and then I've got well, four players, and there's one exception, and I want you to remember that. It's very, very important. So the first player we're going to look at is Fred, highly in demand in the Premier League. Why? Because he had 79 pace. This card's an okay card. It's not a terrible card. It's a decent starter team card. If we look at this card, when the game first drops, it's low, and he just kept climbing and climbing and climbing for the first sort of two weeks, roughly, before dropping off as rewards came out and then just steadily fell down. Now, this sort of card is a sort of card you can buy initially and then let it go up and up and up. Um, but these sort of cards, these lower end cards, your aim and your aspiration is to flip them instantly. And by instantly, we mean within sort of 12 to 24 hours. Even though this card rises, this card's an 81 rated card. It gets packed quite often. And so there's a demand for him initially. But once the game really kicks into gear, he's going to keep getting packed. And then his price sort of steadily declines as better cards come onto the market from promos. Um, and as loads of him end up on the market. When we talk about quick flipping, let's take an example of the 8th of October. Thursday, the 8th of October. This card's 23,000 and 25,000 on PS4. What you need to be thinking is, I want to buy that card below the price he's currently going for. So let's say, theoretically, rewards came out on that day and he dropped off to about 18,000 coins. You would have known that was a buy price based upon the, the price he's been showing recently because he's dipped below the price that he's been going up from the whole time. So you can look at a graph. All you've got to do is look at their graphs and it will show you what they've been selling for and what the trend if it is. If the trend's up, you know there's demand on him. If the trend's down, you know you don't want to be holding him for too long. We always need to account for the 5% EA tax. So on something that costs 25,000, you lose 1,250 coins. Um, so you've got to factor that in. But again, pace is crucial. League is also important. This guy's Premier League. A lot of people build Premier League squads and they tend to rise in value those cards once the full game is out and everyone is building their squads. It's the main league everyone uses. Now let's look at Marcus Levente. Another card. Massive pace at the beginning of the game. Everyone wants him. And if you look at him... He starts off very expensive and then just steadily declines the whole time. Why? Because he's not Premier League and there are other options in the Premier League that meet the criteria this card does. Does that mean we can't trade with him? No, it doesn't. What it means is on that specific day, you want to check the price he's selling for and buy them below that. Now, there are two ways you can buy this card. The first is to compare price back out, basically snipe the cards. My preferred method early on is bidding on these cards. So if he's selling on Saturday, the, October the 3rd for 27,000 coins... I'm going to bid on this card and try and get him at 22, 23,000. And it's more than feasible. It's more than feasible to do that. And the main reason that you want to do it in bids is you're allowing, you're allowing yourself to control what you're buying. Sniping can lead to people snapping onto a player and buying him at the wrong price. Whereas bidding, you know, right, I don't want to bid anything higher than 23,000 coins to make my profit on this card. Federico Valverde, another one. Those of you who had a higher tier budget, another one sort of held his price quite well at the beginning before dropping off steadily. Again, same principle applies to him um, in the way that you're buying him, the way you're selling him. That same principle always apply. And then Alfonso Davies, again, he actually saw a bit of a rise initially and then dropped off steadily. Same principle applies to Alfonso Davies. Now, these are all sort of mid-tier cards, but it could have been done at a lower end as well. For those who don't have as many coins, again, we're looking at pace, pace, pace. Comrade Lamer, 
Now, he was hard to link up. Really, you could only use this guy in a Bundesliga squad. Um, but again, if you look at him, he started off very expensive and dipped very, very quickly. Does that mean he was bad to trade with? No, it meant he was great to trade with. Because he was 81 rated. People threw this card into the market. I traded with him like mad. People threw him onto the market at discard price, 1,000. No one really looked at him. No one really looked at him. He was one of the main cards I traded with. Because I was like, everyone's looking at Valverde. Everyone's looking at Lorente. This card's a good card to trade with. And why else might he be good? Because a lot of people go and put Shadows and Hunters onto these sort of cards. On every card you get. Now, on someone like a Federico Valverde, that Shadow is going to offer minimal value. Because he's already a 61,000 coin card. But someone like Conrad Lehmer, because he costs 1k, 2k, not everyone's going to be willing to throw a 3 or 4k consumable in a shadow on this card. Not everyone. Some will, some won't. So when you see him listed up for these sort of 1,900 coins, look for these sort of cards with shadows and hunters on them. They add value. So when you see someone like Conrad Lehmer, you go, okay, cool, he's selling for 1,900. But let me check what he's selling for with a shadow on him. And you might find he's selling for 3,000 coins for shadow. It means anything you buy at 1,900 with Shadow is 1,000 coins profit. Below that, even more profit. And you have to look like that. Always remember that Shadow's Hunters always, always add value, as do position changes. Cam to CM on FIFA 21, Cam to CM was 5,000 coins. So if you had a striker that came down to CM, he had a lot more value because you'd already spent 5,000 coins on getting him down there. If you add a Hunter onto it, suddenly this card's got five, six, seven thousand 7,000 coins more value. So if you look at someone like a Gabriel Jesus at the beginning of FIFA 21, he did very well. Now, some of these cards will have moved to different teams and whatever. That doesn't matter. The premise still counts. Now, let's look at high tier, much higher tier. Marcus Rashford, last year. Look at his trend. His trend was fully upwards and it kept going up and up and up and up and up. Reason being, Premier League, five-star skill moves and not everyone had the coins to buy this card. But he's the sort of card that's a step up from, say, a Raheem Sterling or a Wilfred Zaha. So people start off in the starter teams with a Sterling or a Zaha and then they sell those as they get more coins and they improve their team by buying a Rashford and it improves it. So once you've done flipping, if you if you ain't got time on the game or you don't want to do it, these are the sort of cards to look for. These mid-tier Premier League, pacey wingers, pacey centre mids, pacey centre backs like Joe Gomez. They'll be good cards to invest in usually. There's never a guarantee. There's a lot of pace this year in the game, but you can be pretty certain a five-star skill move Premier League player with decent shooting, great pace is going to do well. So how do we find those cards this year? At the moment, Footmind is your place. Eventually, I'd advise Footwiz all day long. Once Footwiz get the full database on it, it's great. You've got the graph there. It tells you what they're doing to look at Footwiz. But if you want to start getting them together now, FIFA 22 players, they've got all the players pretty much. I think the top 480. And all you want to do is click here, sort by pace. And it's going to show you every single player. Now, Kylian Mbappe, is it a good idea first game? Of course he's not. He's too expensive. But again, Alfonso Davies. Adama Traore, Premier League, right wing. People are going to want him. Ashraf Hakimi links into the, the PSG sort of hype. They've got a ridiculous team this year. Vinicius Jr., um, Real Madrid. Again, five-star skill moves should do quite well. Um, Daniel James will do okay, but it wouldn't be someone that I'd be looking at too much. I, I wouldn't be too bothered by him. And you keep going down, you'll find loads and loads and loads and loads of them, okay? You'll find loads of them. And then you can sort them by position. So you've got your strikers. And you can flick down and look for, I don't know, let's go to page three. Go even further than that, I think it's going to be like 34. Cam. Trying to find the centre-backs, that's what I want. Trying to find the centre-backs here, let me try and find the centre-backs. Let me find the centre-backs, I'll be right back. Alright guys, it's actually really simple. All I had to do is click centre-back and it brought them all up. Um, but these are centre-backs here, so again, looking at these higher-end ones, they're going to be expensive and valuable, but these aren't the ones you're going to be looking at early on. What you really want is sort of lower rated ones, but the ones that have got pace again. So someone like a Jules Kunde could be good. 81 pace on a centre-back is going to be very, very nice. Uh, there's a lot of pace on centre-backs this year. Costas Manolas, again, will do well. Uh, Eden Militao will do well. Pepe will do well. Open Makana will do well. For me this year, any centre-back with above 80 pace is going to be wanted and it's going to be sought after. But there are a lot to choose from. A lot. My advice to you would be to stick towards the major leagues um, in terms of long-term investments in terms of short-term anywhere all you've got to do is check the price they're currently selling for and buy lower than that it sounds simple but a lot of people don't get that a lot of people don't get that that's simplistically how a lot of people trade um they will just go and you can come up with different sort of i guess best weapon is different filters and it's not always possible to find some of the best filters but if you keep seeing recurring themes of players maybe that have got decent pace so ed Militao, diego carlos both brazilian center backs from la liga you can try and maybe set up something along those lines where hopefully they pop and you get Diego Carlos pop in, you get Eden Militao pop in. 
and you can set up filters like on the actual game itself. So let's say, for example, Diego Carlos is selling for 15k, Eden Militao is selling for 25k. You'll set a filter up that has a buy now maximum of 15k. Eden Militao might pop and that would be great, but you're going to guarantee yourself Diego Carlos. And if you get an Eden Militao, then fantastic. Um, or you can just search through them and bid them as you go. And you would, I would just keep flicking through this list. And right now, start making a list of these players. Lucas Klosterman, 85 pace. Jason Denier, 83 pace. The major leagues, I think they're going to be hype at the beginning of the game, are going to be the Premier League as always and Ligue 1. Ligue 1 obviously got, now got Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, all these cards in there. They're the leagues I think they're going to have the most hype. So Jason Denier, for example, fits into that very, very well. 83 pace centre-back. It looks like a great card, to be fair, for an 80-rated card. But with these lower-rated cards, the crucial thing is to not hold them for too long. They're packed very often. They're not boards. They keep getting packed from people opening packs on the game. So really, your, main, your sort of mentality has to be, let me buy this card and flip it on straight away. Buy this card, flip it on straight away. So let's sum it up in terms of the best way to look at this. First thing to do, look at last year's uh, players, look at last year's graphs and show yourself and look at what's, what's gone on, basically. Who did well, who didn't do well. Once you've done that, get yourself a list of players that you want to work with when the game comes out. So as soon as the game comes out, you are armed with the knowledge of the cards that you want to work with. Once that's done, start flipping. Get on the game, make your early bit of coins, and then start flipping these cards for profit instantaneously. So literally, pick the card up, set it straight on. Pick the card up, set it straight on. Remember that hunters, shadows, and position changes add value to cards. So if it's a central midfielder that's gone to striker on their card, it's worth more money. If it's a striker down to central midfielder, it's worth more money. And if those cards have shadows and hunters on them, they're worth even more money. You'll find six, seven, eight thousand coin gaps between those players because people can't be bothered to convert them themselves. So always remember that it's vitally, vitally important. Then once you've made your coins, if you're not willing to trade very much anymore and, and sit there and grind it out, look for cards like Mar Marcus Rashford, those cards that are mid-tier, they should see a rise. There's always a risk involved in that, there's no guarantee, but they're the cards that I'd be looking for to hold and let people buy them when the full game releases on the 1st of October, I believe it is. So you really, if you get into the early access and you get on the Ultimate Edition, you've got sort of nine days to really play with the market before the game comes out. Once the game comes out, if you've got a few investments, that should see you do very, very well and get well over that first 500, 600,000 coins to be able to make and build a very good team that's very, very competitive. But if you're new around here, subscribe down below. Make sure your notifications are turned on so you never miss an upload. But for now, I am out. Peace out. I'll speak to you soon.